thank you so much for having me here today. And it's actually a great pleasure to be able to talk about all the things that we've done over the years in this project. Um, so I will be touching upon the filmmaking side of the big picture. I will begin by talking about the different phases of filmmaking. Now, this is in no way prescriptive. It's something that I have put into phases based on what I've done with the participants. And then uh, I'll be going into the development of each of our six short films. Uh, screen a, a short film trailer, um, reflect on some of the feedbacks that we got from our uh, filmmaking participants, and lastly, the model that we've developed, Pathways to Recovery. So beginning with the process, um, divided into three phases, very simplistically put, um, planning and familiarizing, shooting and assessing, editing and finalizing. In the first phase, planning and familiarizing. So by this time, I have already sat with the participants in the interview, know uh, a lot about the story, their experiences. So at this phase, we sit together to decide the main message, the message that they want to give from their own experiences and who will be the target audience, who they want uh, their voice to reach out to. And then we decide on the storyboard, we prepare the storyboard, which looks as messy as this at the beginning, where we're just jotting down and throwing thoughts and ideas. And then we start uh, putting things together scene by scene so that the participant leaves the room with a list of shots that they will take with the cameras. And then uh, have a little bit of training with the filming equipment. Uh, they might not be familiar with the with the video cameras that we have used. So uh, they do some practice shots during this workshop. And then we agree on a tentative timeline. So it could be two weeks, two months, uh, based on the convenience of the participants. The second phase is shooting and assessing. This is the point where we have collected our shots and we put them together and see whether it all makes sense, whether the message is coming out. and. In this case, we might have to go back to our first phase to revisit our storyboard, to change things if needed, uh, to add, uh, you know, a few shots, uh, you know, to fill gaps. So there's a back and forth movement between the first phase and the second phase. And lastly, there is editing and finalizing. So this is where the participant sees the whole film in Premiere Pro, as you can see in the right hand side picture. So the parts been sits with Premiere Pro, Pro. It's not expected that they would understand the software or work on it. It's just for them to be able to choose things like elements like colors, music, the text, the dialogues, and see how it's coming out in the film. And then uh, they give a verbal consent um, that's recorded uh, uh, to give permission for their film to be made public. And then, like Anna's mentioned before, we did target film festivals uh, around the globe. And um, for that purpose, we had to make trailers of our films, uh, posters, and uh, some festivals require still shots. So, you know, along with the participant, we decide these things together. And we were very fortunate uh, to be accepted in quite a few festivals, uh, having I had some honorary mentions and uh, audience choice awards and award of recognition. So the participants were super happy about that. They were happy that their voice was able to reach that far and were recognized for their work. So now I'll go into our six short films, give a brief, brief summary and um, who, who took part and a little bit about the process of development. First is Diary of a Recovering Drug Addict. Um, this film was by a male addict in recovery, 21 years of age. What he wanted to tell his audience is recovery is possible. And he, he showed that he, he uh, brought out that message by uh, dividing his life story into four chapters and highlighting the thoughts and feelings and different experiences that he had 
from the time before addiction to addiction and into recovery. Now the film format started different, but then uh, we, uh, we had to again do a back and forth between the first two phases. And finally, he sat in front of the camera revealing his identity and talking about his life experiences. It was a two hour long interview in front of the camera. This is not the same interview that Rebecca talked about. It's not the photo led interview. It's after that, he wanted to say all these things in front of the camera, but we had to bring it down to 10 minutes. Of course, um, made, making sure that uh, the partsman was happy that we took out some of the important elements from the film, uh, from his interview. The second film, One for the Other, was by three male addicts in recovery, 22, 21 and 19 years of age. And um, they decided to give a message about a stigma, the stigma that they have faced, um, uh, the name calling for them being addicts. Even during the phase of their recovery, they were recognized as addicts, not addicts in recovery. And they wanted to bring that out in this film. and. Um, they did this very actively. They took the cameras, tripods, mics, and then went to the rehab center, asked a few service providers and service users if they want to be involved. And there was like a group of 15, 16 people who enacted in this film and uh, very proudly brought it all together and, um, and uh, developed this 10 minutes film. Then there is the third film, A Different Path to Recovery. This film um, was about, um, is about uh, this woman who was the only female addict in recovery in a rehab full of 189 male addicts. So it was her reflection of how she felt her journey to be so different from all these men around her. And to do this, we used metaphorical images and videos. Now this was done during lockdown. So we were both in different cities. So using our phones and cameras, whatever we had, we collected uh, video clips or clips that we had from before, put them together into this five minutes film uh, showing her journey uh, into recovery and how she felt it was so different from the men around her. The fourth film, Taint in the Lush Green, is the only film by our younger group of participants, two females from 15 to 16 years of age, who were successfully resisting substance use. They wanted to talk about this village, where they belonged to a remote village in Assam, and how this village was plagued with uh, alcoholism, the problems that they were facing because of it. So, uh, they went through the training with the equipment, the practice shots, but at the end they wanted a little bit of help. They weren't as comfortable. So I did go to the village and we collected the shots together and uh, brought out some nice, um, you know, scenes from the village, people working early in the morning as I happened to reach there early in the morning, thankfully. And then uh, we enacted um, the parts to show the darker side of this village based on their description. So we worked together to make these shots and ultimately had um, six minutes, six seconds shot film. The next, the fifth film, Wrestling Against All Odds. Now these two participants, male addicts in recovery, 21 and 22 years, they wanted to show the challenges that they have faced during the COVID lockdown. As addicts in recovery, what are the problems and how important AA and NA meetings are to keep them in recovery? And what were the arrangements that had to be quickly made during this lockdown? So um, one of these male participants had already taken part. He was uh, part of the second film, one for the other. So he was way more confident now. Um, and then he helped this other participants and they worked together again, uh, went back to the rehab center and using just one per participant as a character. It's just one of them acting out the whole thing and, um, and bringing it together as all these challenges, all these odds that they have to face um, during the journey. 
the last film ek notun prabhat a new dawn is a film um about a, a true story this film depicts uh, the problems of young assamese women uh who at the same time were um struggling with substance addiction and uh this 23 year old female addict in recovery uh, uh wanted to bring out every part different parts of her story in a typical film format having dialogues having music and she involves many of her peers in the acting many even included a, a someone of uh, one of her friends to do some editing which i was very happy for so they did some pre- i used premiere pro did some editing and i did the last brush up and it was an active participation on, on these group of young people you know getting together to put this film uh so that's uh, 16 minutes 44 seconds the longest film um uh among all the six so uh i will show next just one of the trailers paint in the lush green um uh before i move on to the feedback find all our films in our website including the trailers if you're interested so i will move ahead with the feedback that we got from our film participants uh we asked three questions what's it been like taking part in filmmaking how do you feel about the film being made public and how do you hope people will react so i'll just um show some of the feedback that we got uh for the first one diary of recovering drug addict He talked about how uh being part of this film encouraged him to explain himself to explain his life story the experiences that he's been through why he's been through and that gave him some sort of confidence to give answers to express himself and at that time he was also involved in um in awareness program so this was also helping him build skills to talk to others about his stories um and then he showed the film to his friends of course and they were they really liked it and that encouraged him they even asked if they can take part so you can imagine that he was he felt really grateful to be part of this uh this a uh, project and be able to talk about his stories through film and then there was a different path to recovery so this is a film where the parts been decided not to reveal her identity but in the process of developing this film and seeing the whole film at the end it gave her a sense of realization um she could identify herself she could see a bird's eye view she could have a bird's eye view of whatever happened along her journey and that felt good for her and then she hopes that the public will see this will realize that all the things that an addict goes through and support them through all the struggles the third uh one the last one that I'll be talking about is the Tendal Lush Green where this one of the participants one of the girls said that to this film uh she could sh- say things that words alone wouldn't have explained it and that was very powerful to be ab- able to have these mediums she's already spoken uh about her story in in her interview but she's getting another channel here to express it in visual means in the form of a film and she hopes that people will really watch this and understand the importance of rehab because in that remote village rehab is seen as a mad house so she wants people to understand uh that this is a place where people with alcoholic or alcoholism and uh, a drug problem can get better so uh moving on the next bit is this it's the model that we have developed from um 
from the lived experiences shared by our participants. So from, uh, you know, all the stages and phases from not using to casual use to addiction and into recovery. And I won't be talking about these stages. Uh, uh, you'll see that later. Uh, what I would like to say here is we converted this model into something like this, a map like illustration where uh, it, we can reach to a wide audience. We even developed this into an educational package that can be used in different institutes to understand these different phases and stages uh, from addiction to recovery. And before we finalized on this map, uh, uh, I took this map to four of our participants, two males and two females, who gave very useful feedback, which we incorporated into the map. And they also traced their journey in this map using a pencil. So, and then we changed this whole map into an animation. That's where hopefully uh, it will be useful to understand all these stages and phases. I followed the older guys. I liked their lifestyle, wanted to be like them. So I started hanging out with them and doing things they did, using drugs, roaming around. I soon felt cool. From erase X to weed to hard drugs, I continued to experiment, explore. And then at one point, I found myself unable to stop using. My life started spinning out of control. I couldn't concentrate on anything. Substances were having a bad effect on my health and also my relationships. So I tried to quit on my own. I managed to stop using several times. However, the cravings were too strong and I always started using again soon. Particularly when I met a problem in my life or friends who I had substance with before. Everything felt hopeless. Thank you so much.